Hey, what's up guys? You guys are listening to Shut Up and Fail with Woody Landeros. Today, I am here with Memento Artist. Yes. How's it going? It's going good, man. Glad to good. be here. Back in my, uh, my college town here, so feeling good. How are you Sweet. doing? College town. You went to UCR, right? UCR. That's yeah, right. we were just talking about that. Yeah. How'd you like that? Uh, it was... There was pros and cons to it. Yeah. I, I liked my, my time there, but uh, you know, I don't think college was the right thing for me, to be yeah. honest, <laughs> overall. Yeah, but no, I, I had a good time in, in UCR. It wasn't for you either? No, I went yeah. for like two semesters. I, like, I lied to myself. Yeah. I said, oh, it's for me, it's for me, because <laughs> I wanted to be the student and like, oh, shit. I wanted to be the student. I wanted to be like, you know, the smart guy in the family, but that's my brother. Okay. <laughs> I'm the artsy no, it's guy. It's all good, man. It's all good. So um, let's get to the podcast, because I know we only have 30 minutes and... We have a lot to say on this one. Cool. Let's get so, to it. what do you do? Tell everyone what you do. I know you said to call you an artist. Yep. But go ahead and give like a further explanation. So, say my name is blah 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 and. Okay. Yeah. So my name is Memento. Um, I'm from San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, I just refer to myself as an artist. Uh, at its core, I'm a hip hop artist. Uh, I do like hip hop rap music. Um, just doing my thing, releasing a song every couple weeks. Um, my whole trying to spread my whole message, which is basically. Don't follow the rules society tells you to do. Do what you want to do with your life. Uh, in other words, fuck the system. <laughs> it's nice. been my little brand for a little while. Um, yeah, that's basically what I do. That's who I am. So like Memento, like, can you break that down? How'd you get that name? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so there's a couple of reasons behind that. Uh, first of all, I wanted a name that's a little bit like ambiguous when you hear it. Like you don't know if it's a, a rapper, like a rock group, mm -hmm. a solo artist, whatever. Uh, I wanted something that sounds like iconic, like almost like like legendary, you know, like the same Memento. way. Memento. Yeah, exactly. The same yeah. way like Nirvana. Yeah. Memento. You know what I mean? Something like that. Um, and also the biggest reason, and this is the, the real deep reason, for me growing up, um, and I'm sure for you and for other, everybody else who listens to music passionately, certain songs represent certain times in your life. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to those songs, you get transported back in those times. Yes. So for me, those songs are mementos of like, you know, 2005, 2007, mm. whatever else. So what I want my music to do, my music to do is be that for some other You kid. want to create mementos. Yeah. I like that. Exactly. I like that. That really like, for, for me, that connects because I dance. I yeah. think I told you. And so like every time I hear a song and I had choreography to it, then it just brings me back to that moment on stage yeah. or that moment behind the stage where I was nervous and I was listening to another song trying to figure <laughs> out like I'm trying to remember my routine or you know in a stressful moment happy moment sad moment so definitely I think I'll, like just that's a perfect name yeah thank like you. for thank as, you. A, as a musician yeah and I, sure. I think it's cool that you have that and it's not like I don't know little jams or something right like <laughs> exactly little worms on the beat so yeah I'm glad about that too. I, I hate those man I hate those so much I can't handle them so what do you um so you kind of said I I wanted to have you like explain what your career looks like on a day-to-day -day basis you said to release songs every few weeks or one once a week or so how oh not how once a week work? I wish <laughs> it's it's kind of more like once a month at this point um as far as day-to-day -day, uh it's a little different every day um I do have a day job I live mm -hmm. in LA and I have my day job that I go to 40 hours a week uh just to pay my rent and everything do you, do you tell them fuck the system uh, <laughs> we honestly, this, this is a funny part. Like we actually have a little group in my office called the FTS club and I'm the president. Oh, nice. <laughs> like no joke. Shout out to that. Shout out to the FTS club. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so I go to my day job. I say FTS the whole day. I'm just kidding. And then I go home and, uh, I try to just spend as much time as I can just doing something music related, whether it's, I try to do social media every day, keep mm -hmm. active with my fans and on social media, uh, Instagram, Twitter, whatever. Uh, I try to do live streams, whatever I can do. But I try to spend most of my time just doing like the writing aspect of it mm -hmm. and just like trying to get better at my craft. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in the whole 10,000 hour rule. Yeah. I mean, I don't know about 10,000 hours, but I'm a big believer in just doing the reps at the gym and just like practicing. Gary you know? Vee, just like nonstop. Pretty just much. <laughs> and this is what I like to do. Like, yeah. I don't really care for social media, but I have to do it. Yeah. But I do care for making music. Yeah. So yeah, that's my day to day. I'm so bad at social media. Yeah. I, Dude, I, wish, I was too. I, I wish like... I just had a management company already. Oh, me too. Because yeah. I, I like making content, but when it comes down to like, I can't even think of a caption. Yeah. Like I have the picture, I have like six pictures ready, but I have no caption. So I'm like, forget it, I'm not even gonna post this week. Dude, it takes, it's so, it's so bad. It takes a while to get, I'm not even an expert or anything, but yeah. it takes a while to get good at it. Yeah. I'm, I'm horrible at it. <laughs> so bad. So what do you enjoy mo most, moist? What do you enjo enjoy most about your career? Ooh, um, a lot of answers to that. I mean, I just love creating songs, man. Like mm -hmm. when I, I, 
you know, you can get in your head as an artist and it gets frustrating sometimes, but when I have the final product like being mixed and mastered and I'm hearing what I've done and I've poured my heart in it, like yeah. nothing beats that feeling, man. Like yeah. Just having something you completed, like that's the best feeling ever. Mm -hmm. And another thing I really enjoy is just getting on stage. Yeah. Like doing a show and knowing that I just fucking killed it, like that's yeah. another one of the best feelings ever. And those are the main two aspects of being an artist. So, you know, yeah. life is good, man. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think even just like going, so, it's it, music and dancing is just so much alike. I mean, we, we like kind of dance around each other. Yeah. Um, I know Literally. like even doing choreography, that's the part where like I get in my head, like you said. Yeah. And then you like kind of get frustrated through it. But once you get to the end and you're able to be on stage and you're able to perform it and then say like, this is a finished piece. Like I know what I'm doing. Yeah. I know what I'm here for. I know what, like what kind of message I'm trying to push out and then to be to like execute it is just the best feeling ever yeah totally um but tell i like i have a version of getting in my head and i uh i stick with this saying that tony robbins said it's uh get in your head you're dead yeah so like you know you just get in your <laughs> head well and it's, it'll just like destroy you so how do you feel like when you get in your head or what, what is that like paint a picture for me how does that work out like do you yeah do you have like other people's thoughts your own thoughts, negative thoughts, what type of things are going through your head? Well, before I get into that, I wanna say, I think there is a balance. Like th there is a little element of getting in your head that actually is helpful. Mm -hmm. It's the whole perfectionism thing. You know, you have to have a little bit of that, like that high standard to actually yeah. make good shit, but you can't overdo it basically. Mm -hmm. So with that said, um, what I do when I get in my head or when I'm being too perfectionist is I just, I have to take time away from it. Like if I'm working on one song and I've heard this song over and over for hours and hours, I just turn it off, like completely distract my mind, either listen to a different song or do mm -hmm. something different, uh, you know, and that could be literally for like five minutes or for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Like it just, it just depends on the project and how I'm feeling about it. Um, but also it's just, I think it's a gradual process, man. Like yeah. you have to, I think everybody kind of starts off being that perfectionist, getting into their head when they mm -hmm. make art and stuff. And as they get, you know, more and more established, not established, like more and more progress in their career, mm -hmm. it naturally just kind of like figures itself out, you know? Yeah. And when you so. have more eyes, it's like the show must go on. Yeah, no, totally. Like, I don't care, like three, two, one, action. It's live. Exactly. Let's do this. I'm with that. So. Um, That's actually one of my favorite quotes. The show yeah. must go on. Yeah. Yeah. So That's uh, Rebecca's, which is my girlfriend. I don't know if you know that. Oh, cool. But. That's her, so, her what? That's what she, she likes to say that. Okay, like the yeah, show must go on. Like she doesn't, like sometimes it, you just, you're just not in the mood to like edit a video or you're not in the mood to like do certain things, but it's just Absolutely. like, you got to keep on going. Yeah. You got to keep on treading on that bike. And if you stop, the bike's going to tip over. Yeah, totally. Like, and nobody, it's, you're that's, riding your own bike. You got to keep on, you got to keep on pedaling. Yeah, doesn't matter what analogy. day it is. Um, so tell me about like some of your achievements. Like, because... I mean, we could all say, you know, I'm an artist, he's an yeah, artist. So yeah. tell me like some of the things that you're most proud about. I mean, it doesn't have to be like awards, but yeah. like, for me, I painted this this thing in my room and then I- Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Um, you wanna get deep? I can get deep with yeah, this one. Yeah, get deep. <laughs> um, okay, so last year, 2017, uh, I played uh, this gigantic show for over 2,200 people. And it was basically in honor of my hero, his name was Chester Bennington, and he was the lead singer of Linkin Park. Mm -hmm. And I can say, like, without exaggeration, that that man is responsible for me being here today, being an artist, period. Like, him and Mike Shinoda and that band is, like, the reason I started making music and the reason I've kind mm -hmm. of freed myself from the whole system thing I was telling you about earlier. Yeah. So, uh, he passed away untimely um, last year on July 20th. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously, I was just completely devastated, but I knew that I had to just do something. Like, I couldn't just be quiet about this. Like, I wanted to pay my respects in a way where, um, you know, his wife would see it, his family would see it, and his band would see it. Mm. And I got to play that memorial, and dude, like, I played a 15 minute set, and literally 7.45 p.m. that night, and eight o'clock p.m. that night, I was a different man. I just completely just changed as a person. Like, mm. I mean, the show, like, I got everybody to, like, 2,200 people, like, up and singing with me, up just singing their hearts out, and like, it was the first time I got people like, you know, rushing to me after the show. I was like, can I get a selfie with you? Like, yeah. can I get a photo, whatever? Um, like, it was just, it was crazy. I can talk mm -hmm. about it for hours. Yeah. But yeah, it was just one of the most proud. And like, because of what the effect like Chester and Linkin Park had on me, like that is gonna be a career highlight for me like five, yeah. 25 years down the line. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just really important to me. So, so did you, were you afraid at all when you were doing that? Like beforehand? Like, did you? <sighs> you know, I, 
I was, I wouldn't say I was the day of, but the weeks leading up to it, I was terrified. Yeah. Like I, I still remember the night before I was like, you know what? I got to focus. This is a huge, like important moment for my life. And I have to just go in with the mentality of like, look, whatever, wherever Chester is, I want to make him proud. Yeah. You know, I want him to look down or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever your beliefs are. And I want him to be proud of what he sees. Yeah. And you know, the fans I make that day, that's all whatever. That doesn't really matter. That's yeah. just, that's a, like a, a perk, I guess. Mm-hmm. But that's the, that's what the achievement will be. If yeah. I feel like I've just, you know, done him justice. So. That's awesome. Because of that, what that I, made the fear go away. Yeah. What I, what I hear in that is like, everybody's voice like must be heard. And if you don't like speak, then you always regret it. Yeah. But like, even if you say like the right thing or the wrong thing, like you're going to you're gonna feel good about it. Like you, you just should always like speak what you feel. Yeah, and like for, sure. for you to go out on stage and be like vulnerable, and to just like, you know, yeah, yeah, put it all out there is pretty cool. Yeah, totally. And I think that's what like people see. Like when when people see a voice speak up, then it's like, I want to follow you. Yeah, yeah. No, they love that. So, yeah. So what about so now? Like we went over one of the things that you were most you know, at your top. Yeah. But this is shut up and fail. So let's get to it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's go. So I'm, I'm sure it didn't always look like this. No, <laughs> definitely not. Um, I want, I want you to tell me how it was when you first started, like, like, Hey mom, I'm going to be a, a rapper. Yeah. Um, well, in that context, uh, I want to say it was always good. You know, mm-hmm. my parents have always been really supportive. My mom especially has been like, I mean, she's my best friend. She's yeah. always been my biggest fan, my biggest supporter, as most moms are. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, no, for real. Like we, yeah. She's she listens to your music. Yeah, that's she, awesome. She like digests every song, takes it apart lyrically and everything. Like that's <laughs> it's, cool. it's pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, so in the beginning, um, you know, there was obviously a lot of stuff that was not going the right way. Um, I would say the biggest, just to get to the point of this podcast, the biggest failure in that time was the fact that I didn't have balance in my life. Mm. Like I, I was living at home with my parents in the Bay Area and I, I could afford to quit my day job and just spend all my time doing music. But not only did I quit my day job, I just basically cut off all my friends, cut off all social interaction, cut off everything, cut off even exercise and working out just to just make music 24-7. Yeah. And I mean, I got pretty good pretty fast, but it took a toll on my mental health, dude. Like mm. I, I felt, you know, depressive symptoms a lot. Like it just felt very isolating, very frustrating. And it was, nothing's more important than your health and your mental yeah. health, you know, like fuck your career, you know what definitely. I mean? Like, so that was definitely the, um, that's kind of how it was in the beginning. Like my, one of my songs, Price I Pay is kind of about that. Like mm-hmm. when I made that song, I had a different mindset about it. I was like, you know what, to be this, you know, big, bad success, I gotta be like isolated and just do my own thing. And, uh, you know, that's the price I pay for the ambition I have. Yeah. But I've come to realize that's not true. It's just not. Yeah. I think so. I did that in an opposite way. I was doing a ton of art and then I felt like I really wanted to make it financially. Yeah. So I cut off all my friends. I cut off all the time. I did like 12, 14 hour days every single day of the week Yep. and just like shut everyone out. And I went, when I went home, I was even afraid to like talk to people because I just felt like you're going to, you're going to take me away from me making money. Your focus, right? And you can't, yeah. Yeah, you can't take that away from me. I wouldn't even talk to even girls. I was like, I yeah. can't, this is not, I do not have time for this. Yeah. So I did that for maybe like two years. Yeah, yeah. Two years nonstop. And you yeah. could even ask Sterling yeah. and Adrian, they didn't see me at all. Really? It was just yeah. like, I was gone. Yeah. And then like, I um, quit my job in December and then I gave them a phone call and they're like, you're out? <laughs> it was like, it was like I was in prison, but like yeah. in my mental state. Yeah. And they're like, bro, let's go get something to eat. Like, what, are you awesome. serious? Like, you want to hang out? Let's yeah, do this. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> and like Sterling came down from LA and then, you know, AG, he's always, he was always willing to hang out. Yeah. So it was cool. It was like, it was very eye opening to see that, you know, you really have to focus on, on a bigger picture. Like don't just fill up one slice. Like for sure. Look at all the levels yeah. of life. Agreed completely. There's like, what is that? The grid of, um, the five things of life or something. It's like health, wealth, happiness, you talking about the hierarchy of needs? The, Something. Uh, no, it's like a circle. I don't, I don't know. I think I'm familiar with it. I don't know. If if I find it, I'll I'll pin it right here <laughs> for just one one second, and then I'll bring it down. Um, but yeah. So, I mean, how? See, so you said you said it was like. It was hard to do that. Like, how did you how did you handle that? Like, did you ever have like breakouts, or did you? What is just like shut down and like I'm just gonna do this. 
Like, um, like you said you had, you had kind of, um, like you went through like depression and stuff. I mean, I wouldn't say I went through depression. I would say I felt like just very, uh, I, I wouldn't say depression. I would say like frustrated was the word, you know? Mm. I just felt frustrated with my situation. And then it was at the point where like, I would see other people having fun and I get pissed off at them for having mm, fun. You so know what I mean? It was more anger. It's, yeah, it was definitely more, more anger, anger than anger, sadness. frustrated, yeah. It wasn't sadness, yeah, it was more anger, yeah. for sure, yeah. But um, the way I got out of it was, I mean, honestly, as it went out, it got wor- as it went on, I mean, it got worse. Mm-hmm. Like, the, I started feeling it, honestly, man, in the first, like, month that yeah. I was doing it. But it was it was very negligible at that point. It was it had only been a month. Mm-hmm. And then after maybe like, you know, six to eight months, probably probably eight ish, nine ish months, I was like, you know what, fuck this. This is not good for my mental health. Like this yeah. I'm just going down this hole. Like I haven't I don't have any friends. I don't have any you know, I don't have a girlfriend. Yeah. I don't have anything that I can um do outside of this. Like my mind is always on. You know what I mean? And that gets really just really stressful and really just that's not good for you when your mm-hmm. mind is always working, you know? Like there's a difference between always just making music and doing shit or keep your mind always running. Yeah. And for me it was more the latter. Like my mind was just always on. Mm-hmm. And it was just stressful. Um but yeah the way I got out of it was I think I just became self aware. You know, I realized yeah. this, is what, this is what's going on and I have to stop it. And even then it was a process. Like I still like even now I don't really like on Friday nights, I don't go out or anything. I just, I try to work, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's much better than before. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not, you know, going through the, that angry, angry, angry phase anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's crazy. So how did you like, was there, was there something that just like hit you or like, how did it break out? Cause I know some people go through like, like frustrations lead to breakthroughs. Yeah. Like how, For sure. like, what, what was, was there like a moment or was it more like a, like a flow? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, cause I mean, you can say after this happened, I, it really made me think yeah. or after I saw yeah. that this crumbled down or was it just like, oh shoot, like I really need to focus on it. And then it was slowly transitioning. You know, now that you're asking me, I'm kind of realizing what the an- actual answer is. Like, I think it was kind of a combination of two things. There was definitely a moment, but there was also like, that moment wouldn't have come if that gradual like, you know, uh, process didn't happen. But the moment was actually just, you know, a conversation with my mother. Mm. Like, you know, like I said, I'm really close to her and we're, you know, I'm really very open with her about everything going on. So, and she's my mom, she can tell when something's wrong with me, you know? So she's known that I've just been in a kind of a bad place for, not that I've been in, but I was in a bad place for a little while. They can tell. Yeah, she could definitely tell. tell. Yeah, and I mean, since I cut everybody else off, she's the only one who saw me, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but it was a conversation with her, I think, that really made me realize what's going on. Because, I mean, even what we're doing right now, like, as you talk about it, you realize what's really going on in your yeah. life, you know? Like, you can have, you can be in your own head, like we were saying yeah. earlier. This but, is like, this is therapy for me right now. Yeah, no, It, it real. really is, like, I, I don't really, like, sometimes you don't even think about things, and then when you bring someone else in and you ask them, like, I'm answering my own questions too yeah. in my head every single time. Damn. Well, like I'm, I'm thinking about like, oh man, like I really, I got pissed off and then this happened and then this and then I said this and I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. And I, uh, I'll like think about it. Wow. Which maybe is a good thing. Maybe that's it's a bad thing. Definitely a good thing. But. I'm, I'm glad that's happening then. <laughs> yeah, I really do think it through and then like, you know, sometimes even the other person's solution is like my future answer. Yeah, yeah. Is I'll think about it and I'll say that's what I need to apply. Like I need to make sure I don't like isolate myself so much right right for sure yeah yeah i'm sorry i think i think i cut you off your mom oh i mean really? that was the answer just a conversation okay, with her you know cool, we yeah, became yeah. we became aware of the issues yeah um yeah so you dealt you dealt with it with like talking with your mom and then you realized that and you came out of it so how did that how did that frustration or how did that failure or that tension um change your career like with your music did it affect it um massively could you see like a, a difference like if you went back to that time frame could you see a difference in your music you know that's a good question because i personally couldn't see it but other people could mm. like i would um you know after we got through that whole isolation thing it it fixed a lot of other things like the whole perfectionist mentality kind of died down like i had that thing that meant that mentality for the first i would say three singles i put out mm-hmm. they were all just very like masterfully crafted and every detail was how i wanted it to be mm-hmm. and then from then on i just kind of like I try not to overthink things, yeah. you know, like music, I think at its core, not a blanket rule, but it should be natural, you know, mm. it shouldn't be thought out. There's the whole left brain, right brain thing. It should definitely be more uh, natural than logical, yeah. you know? So I think my music started getting more natural and less logical. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
to me, I didn't really like, I think when you're in it yourself, you don't really feel yourself improving or making process pro- uh, progress really. But other people definitely saw it. Yeah, they the told people me. around you. Yeah, yeah. Like, like even just fans and people who have been listening to me, yeah. like they would reach out and be like, wow, this is way, like you get better with every single song. Yeah. You know? Well, you're running, you're running your own race. Yeah. And all your fans are like, it's like in cross country where they're, where they're all cheering for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, at the finish and then line. <laughs> you're like, there, there's a point of time whenever, like if, you, if you're like slightly injured or if you're not doing so well, you look to your left and you see someone going, ooh. <laughs> uh, or like at the end when you do like a sprint off yeah. and everybody just cheers for you. Like yeah, you can yeah. tell like sometimes you don't really see it, but then you like look around at other people's faces and you're like, I could probably run faster. Yeah, that's a I good analogy. I could probably do this. Like I should be in front of that guy or I should try a little right, bit harder. Right. So like sometimes your cheerleaders are the ones that are like dealing with your scoreboard. <laughs> <laughs> More than you are, yeah. Yeah. Very true. Um, so let me go on to, so we talked about what did other people say about your work and um, just you as a person during these failures. Who, who was the one person that you felt like, um, like did you feel like you let anybody down? Because I know that happens a lot when you go through like a failure or frustration, like you don't want somebody to, to realize that or like I covered it up a lot with um, one of my friends that I had way back when and I just kept on like saying yeah I'm doing really good you know I have this project yeah that yeah and I would go home and just like shit yeah I just, I'm not really doing that well yeah um sorry what was the original question who so did like did you like, like who who do you feel like you are you're worried about or like did you feel anybody like looking at you while you were going through the phase I guess I'm not really wording it right did you feel that like you were letting anybody down by like being frustrated? By doing that. Um, yeah, I mean my friends mm-hmm. for sure. Like all the people I had basically just cut off. It wasn't like I said, fuck you, don't talk to me. Mm-hmm. But it was kind of like I just stopped hanging out with them and stopped reaching out. And when they said, let's hang out, I was like, no, I'm busy. I got to work, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, definitely my friends. Like, you know, to them, I-, I think some of them feel like they did something wrong. You know, they mm-hmm. feel like this guy's mad at me for something, which yeah. was not the case at all. It was just a personal, you know, decision. Yeah. Um, but I didn't bother. I was like, I don't have time to fucking deal with their feelings. You know, what I mean? yeah. <laughs> so I wanted to stick to my own thing. And um, so, yeah, I mean, the answer to that's definitely just my friends. Like, I definitely feel like I let them down. Um, yeah. So before uh, we started this podcast, you were talking about, you know, what if what if these failures like what if you're what if you're currently going through them? What are those failures? Or what did you mean by that? Uh, so what I meant by that, I mean like the failure I've been talking about today is the whole thing about like isolating myself, and not having balance in my life. You know, I still feel like I'm going through that to an extent. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't say it's anywhere near as bad as it was when I started. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, you know, I'm in a much better headspace, and I have like much more. Um, a, b- a better mindset, yeah. but I mean, I'm still going through it because there's so much shit in my life that I want to do and I need to do. Mm-hmm. Like just having a day job, like back when I went through it the first time, I didn't have a day job. I was living at home with my parents. There was less responsibility um, and I still didn't have balance. Yeah. And now I have, you know, I would love to have a, a great social life. I'd love to have a girlfriend. I'd love to have, uh, you know, a satisfying day job as well as a music career. Yeah. It's just not realistic, man. Yeah. When there's that many things. Um, so with that said, the balance is still hard to achieve. So that's why sometimes I feel like I'm still going through it. Yeah. In fact, this week itself, I had a really frustrating moment where like I wasn't, I had to finish a song that I'm releasing next week, mm-hmm. uh, this coming week. And uh, I just was not be, was not getting it done um, and sacrificing things that I know is not good for me to sacrifice. Like I wasn't exercising, I wasn't eating good, I was eating out. And when that shit, ha- I don't know if I'm sensitive or something, but when that shit happens and I don't take care of my body, I just, yeah, I'm a mess. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? No, yeah. I, um Joseph, my brother, professional boxer, nice. um, he asks me like when, when he's cutting weight, what should he do in order to like cut weight kind of more of a, in a smooth manner? I asked him, well, what are you eating? What kind of music are you consuming? Mm, yeah. Where are you sitting? Yeah. How are you sleeping? What pillow are you using? Yeah, yeah. What's, your temp- what's the temperature like in the room? Mm-hmm. So like there's all these little things can really, really affect. Yeah you overall i think all those little factors do make a difference yeah yeah especially i mean like like you said like what you're putting in your body or in your mind like you are what you eat (laughs) so like in this hot ass room it's just (laughs) 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 it's just over here like (laughs) it's super hot it's not the best spot for a podcast but (laughs) no it isn't it'll get there though (laughs) it'll get there i was kidding (laughs) no i think i think it could be better uh, it was it was in my house, but you know it's not in my house now. Yeah. So it's for the best. Yes. Um, before before I ask these other questions, I know um, 
I kind of just wanted to go back to some of the achievements because yeah. you said one of them, but I know just by following you on Instagram for these past, I know we were trying to set up this podcast like last month, just by seeing the content that you've been pushing out, I've been seeing these other achievements. So can you like just kind of just send it all the way there? Just give like a few more. Yeah. Um, so I guess the one thing that comes to mind is my song, Old Habits. Um, I made this song, I released the song, I think March, 2017, something around then. And uh, I shot the video with Sterling and uh, Basically that song, like the things my fans have told me that song did for them is just like, like I, I'm not gonna say who this is, but somebody literally told me that um, that song got him through rehab. Like he was, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what he was in rehab for, I'm assuming alcohol. Mm -hmm. And he listened to my song, Old Habits, and he literally told me, he's like, Memento, you saved my life. Like I'm getting chills just saying that, dude. Yeah. Like it's crazy like that. like. When it comes to that sort of thing, like this music career is so much bigger than just me. And like, yeah. like my, my whole thing about fuck the system, I'm not gonna do like what they tell me to do. I wanna do what I wanna do. This is way bigger than that. Yeah. Like if it's p saving people's lives. Like there's another guy who, um, I'm not sure exactly which song did it for him, but he told me that like he came to one of my shows and that stopped him from suicide. I'm getting chills again, just saying that. Yeah. Like the effect that, just being honest in my music and not holding back and just being real and vulnerable. Like, first of all, it's therapeutic for me to make that stuff. Yeah. And second of all, if it has this kind of impact on people, like what more can I ask for? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just crazy. So if you want to hear some of the songs where, like what songs were you saying? The, you, you named two songs, right? Yeah. So, um, well the one, I named one song, Old Habits. Mm -hmm. So Memento, Old Habits, it's on, you know, Spotify, YouTube, whatever. Um, but I mean, th let me think of the other ones that have had impact on people. Uh, people love Price I Pay. That's kind of about the, the situation I was talking yeah. about earlier. Uh, old Habits, of course. Um, those are the main two that come to mind. I mean, mm -hmm. I have almost 20 singles out now, but those are the two that people have really said, like, holy shit, like, yeah. this, this th th did something for me. And, you know, it's just like, I mean, other achievements, like, I'm just very, very proud to say that I have, like, a, a really good fan base. Mm -hmm. Like, I have fans who've, I have one fan, this guy's awesome. Um, he drew a portrait of me mm -hmm. on charcoal and he gave it to me. And I put that in my studio and like when I'm like low on motivation or when I'm just like, fuck this, or like I'm frustrated, I look at that and I'm like, damn, I had this much impact on this kid. Keep going, bro, you know That's what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, people have, I, I've had a couple different people draw artwork of me or like for me. That's like one of my favorite things to, yeah. to receive. And then just, you know, just people give me love for like, very real things, like I was telling you before, like this song really helped me, you really inspired me. Um, just after shows when fans wanna take photos and stuff, like that just means a lot, you know? Mm -hmm. Just having that impact yeah. on people means a lot, so. And even just like, um, how you said that one person, you know, made, drew you that? Yeah, the portrait. Yeah, drew you the portrait. Even just like comments or like positive messages goes so far, because I know I get like, oh, yeah. I'll make a video and it maybe will get like 50 views, I'm not, I'm not even gonna lie, like <laughs> it gets like 50 views, but then one person comments like, damn, like this YouTube channel is a gem. Yeah, like I love yeah. finding things like this. Totally. And it's like, I gotta make another video. Yeah, I exactly. gotta do this, and it's just like one person. It just fires you up. So like on the, other, on the other side too, like keep on, like for everyone, just always like send out positive messages to other people because you don't even know like that you might just be affecting them like next year. Yeah, dude, you know that's I mean? actually funny. Like one of my, um, not putting anybody on the spot, one of my hallmates in college in freshman year who was in my dorm, she randomly reached out to me. I haven't spoken to her in like six, seven years. Mm -hmm. She randomly reached out and said like, like it makes me so happy to see what you're doing. You're having a positive impact on my life. Keep going. I'm just like, what the fuck? I haven't even like yeah. talked to her in so long. This is so crazy. That's awesome. It's beautiful. That's awesome. So, I mean, that's definitely one of the things I'm most proud of, like just having this impact and having this kind of a fan base. Mm -hmm. It just, it means the world, you know? It's what I've always dreamed of, so yeah. it's just, it's great. So whenever you do your songs, do you do mainly like, um, do you focus more like on singles or albums or how does that work? Yeah, I do only singles actually. Only singles? Yeah. I used do to you be- you collaborate? Uh, occasionally. occasionally. Like I, I, I never have like, I mean, there's two answers to that. I never have rappers on my songs ever. Mm -hmm. um, I just never really have had the inspiration to, but every single one of my songs has like, somebody else on it, whether it's a producer, like a instrumentalist, a drummer, yeah. whatever else. Um, yeah, I love collaboration, but when it comes to just like the lead vocal, like, I mean, there's singers and stuff, but when it comes to rapping, I don't really, I just don't want anybody else on it yeah. <laughs> right now. You yeah. Know? yeah, that's cool. But I've done, like when people ask me for features, I've done a couple, nice. I think I've done like four, so. Very cool. Yeah. So any other achievements before I continue on? Cause I really want to push out, like, I just want people to kind of hear yeah, what you're that. about and, because even just like achievements, I mean, like it's fun asking that question too. Because when you ask what what's your achievement, 
you can say uh, I sold out five, you know, five hundred thousand tickets. Yeah. And another person can say I impacted someone's life. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to hear. Sure. Th- I want to hear those achievements. Okay. Okay. Let me think. I appreciate you, know you asking I mean? that. Like, yeah, yeah. That's not. Um. I mean, you know, in the beginning, like, there was a lot of kids who. I think my my whole message about like, look, I don't want to do what society's trained me to do. Like, I hate the whole way society's built, the, at least for mi- the middle class, where you kind of have to go to school, go to college, get a job, and that's your life. Yeah. And when I broke out of that in the beginning and made a statement like, "Fuck that, I'm doing this," people like loved that. Like, they were really inspired by that. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's another really big achievement. I think people associate with me. Like, that's part of my brand. Like, the, the whole fuck the yeah. system thing is kind of like my brand. Um. So people really appreciate that about me. Um. Let me do you think. Th- do you think that's for everyone? No, I don't think it's for everyone. But I think that you should always be able to think outside the box. You know, like I know way too many people who have talent and Mm -hmm. have ambition, but they just say like, oh, well, yeah, I'm just going to get a day job. Or that they're like, I've known rappers even or musicians or artists that um, start out and then I will tell them like, you have a lot of potential. Like maybe I can link you up with a recording artist or someone just like, let me help you out. Yeah. And then once it comes down to actually doing something, they say, well, I don't think my parents would really push that. I, mm. I think I should really stick to school. I'm gonna become a doctor. You know, it's deep, man. There's a lot of factors that go into that. Like people are, a lot of people are just, you know, fearful, which yeah. I can empathize with. But I mean, the ones, <laughs> that's that's the empathetic side of me. The side that frustrates me is people who are just lazy, you know, like they yeah. have the capability and they have mm. the potential and um, ambition, but they're just lazy about it. Like that's who my message is for, I feel like, you know? Okay, so not, so the people that aren't, the people that are settling. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than satisfied. Yeah, exactly. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. All right, well. So what advice would you give, I mean, you, you kind of gave the advice, but what advice would you give someone else that's looking to start in the same career? You know, it's, um, the advice I would give is very simple. Just make the most honest, best music you can. Never take shortcuts when you're creating your art. Like, we can get into that like a lot deeper, which we won't right now, but you have to make the best music you can. Like this whole thing about like release a song a week, I think is BS in my opinion. Yeah. Like if you're, if you're releasing- like Russ? Well, no, Russ is an exception <laughs> because he actually makes good shit. <laughs> I love Russ. <laughs> but there's a lot of artists who, um, they do a song a week and they just half-ass the song. Mm-hmm. Like Russ actually made a good song every week. And That's they don't the push it. And they don't push it, yeah. It's like, yeah, but my, my point was like, if you're half-assing your music, like you gotta get the fuck out of here. You know, mm-hmm. like, there's no room for that shit in my opinion. Yeah. So the advice I would give is just make the best music you can and um, interact with your fans. Mm. Like if you make honest music and you have fans and you interact with them, that's a lifelong relationship you're gonna have. Yeah. Like these people are gonna be dedicated to you for life. Yeah. Like I have so many fans who I feel like that's what it's gonna be, you know? Yeah. So that's literally, it. it's that simple. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. And that there, like I said, there's different details and aspects to that, but that's the core of it. Just make great music and interact with your fans and just be humble and appreciative to all your fans, you know? That's it. So now what advice would you give me? Put me on the spot here, be, man. Be honest, like, <laughs> be really honest. Okay, okay. This, let me this, think about this. This is like, I mean, you don't really, I mean, you, you haven't known me for long, but just off of talking to me in my horrible communication skills. <laughs> um, it's all good, brother. And just off of seeing whatever that I've, you know, posted on social media, whatever you know about me, yeah. what advice would you give me as I continue on with this? Ooh, I gotta really think about this for a sec. Um, it could be painful. It's probably the more painful, the more beneficial it can be for me. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, mean, I, don't, I feel like I don't know you well enough to, to give that detailed feedback, but I think the first thing that comes to mind is just be really consistent. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to do this pod, like I know you have a bunch of different video content. If you want to stick to this one or not, not stick, but if you want to focus on this one, like try to do one episode every week, try mm-hmm. to have somebody on here every week. Um, like you were saying, just put it out regardless of the whole perfectionist thing. Yeah. And uh, just put yourself out there more, man. Like I, I think you should try to push your, your stuff uh, like with Facebook ads, like just, just try to reach new people. Yeah. You know, like I'm, I'm not really sure like, like I'll ask you right now, are your followers more like just your friends and family or is it like strangers who don't really know you in person? Yeah, I think it's starting to be strangers. Okay, so yeah. what I always tell like new artists going back to the previous question is if only your friends and family are supporting you, like that's not a career. Yeah. Like that's not gonna help, you know, your your longevity. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really important to have people who've never met you just discover you and love your shit and follow you. Yeah. Like that's, yeah. So Definitely. yeah, for that, just put yourself out there more, man, and just be consistent and yeah. Sweet, I dig it. Yeah, it's that simple. 
I need to post a podcast next week. <laughs> <laughs> get, get on it, man. So now, if you can sum up your career in one word, what word would you choose? So Re- dis- disclaimer, I'm, I'm gonna give this away for the camera here. You did some of this before, but as I promised, I didn't think about it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a, a natural answer. I usually answer. don't tell them at all, and then at the end, they're, they're like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, you shouldn't, man. That's a great question to end on. Okay, one word. Um, I have a very, I have a gut reaction. It's really cliche. I'm thinking there's a better one. Unless you want to hear that one. The struggle. <laughs> no, fuck that. <laughs> Game on. No, no, no. What, it's what it's it? passion. Just passion. I mean, regardless of all the hard times, all the frustrating times, I fucking love doing this shit. You know, mm-hmm. like going on stage is the greatest thing ever. Making music, having a finished product is just an awesome feeling. And I just, I can't get enough. So, I guess that's my answer. Passion. Nice. Passion. Yes, sir. I still can't figure out what my one word is. <laughs> If I had to really think about it, I would have a different answer. I think it's U-turn. <laughs> it's just like, oh, no, U-turn. Go Come ahead on, and try, try something else. <laughs> and then just keep on, keep on trying. Okay, real quick. Can I be, you said be painfully honest, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, because of what you just said, I have a different answer to the advice for you. Just be confident, man. Just yeah. believe in yourself. Fuck what people say. Fuck what you, you say to your, in your head. Just, look, I'm not the greatest rapper in the world. I'm not the greatest artist in the world. But when I get on stage, I feel like I am, you know? Yeah. I tell myself I am. Just be confident, man. Like, not only is it good for you, uh, not only is it good for your career, it's good for your mental, like, mentality. Yeah. Just be, you know, be happy, be confident, love yourself. We're getting corny, but, you know. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. One day I'm gonna look at this when I'm like, 50. <laughs> Perfect. Or 60. I'm glad this one, this one had that impact. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. We're gonna go ahead and end it out, but I'm gonna need you to plug yourself in. Yes, sir. Tags, hashtags, what are you working on? How can people find you? Every sort of at. Yep. Shout out to the homie and the mommy. <laughs> so um, the at is Memento Hip Hop. And I want to clarify, Memento, not Momento, which is a very common mistake. People say I think it's Momento. It's M-E-M-E-N-T-O Hip Hop. Uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, those are my main platforms. Uh, YouTube, it's actually Memento Music TV. Long story. But uh, just look up my stuff on YouTube and you'll find my channel. Um, what I'm working on right now, I'm trying to release, you know, a song, about a song a month, uh, every couple of weeks. Um, constant content, not just songs, like I have music videos, just interviews like this, whatever else. Um, and yeah, man, shout out to my mom. <laughs> and shout out, to, she's gonna watch this, be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> and shout out to, um, you know, shout all the fans. The mommies. All the fans, everybody who supports me, love you guys. Yeah. Nice. Did you say your website? Uh, MementoHipHop.com. Sweet. Yeah. All right, man. Well, do you have anything else to say? Like, this is the end. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> I, w- I wanna preach that message, man. Just, uh, you know, don't do what you've been conditioned to do. Think outside the box. Fuck the system. You know, do what you wanna do. Follow your passions. Life is good. Fuck yeah. That's it. I'm never gonna say anything else. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Sweet. Killed it.